live. It is episode two and you're here with me, Maddie. Hello, I'm Greg. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining us again. Um, a big hi to any of you watching live and also hello to um, anyone who's watching back later. Um, we have been overwhelmed uh, just by how much support we've had from you. Absolutely amazing, amazing response. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. So um, we are live. Oh yeah. gosh, um, <laughs> this is our daily YouTube show. It's, yeah. it's just a time for us all to hang out, mm -hmm. play some games. Uh, we'll show you some make, some experiments, um, have a bit of a laugh. Yeah, That's the plan. Each week we're, we have got a theme and the theme this week is gardens. And that's because we're all spending a lot of time at home at the moment. So we wanted to celebrate being outside and exploring our gardens, if you're lucky enough to have them. But if you don't have a garden, it's okay because we are here to bring you some of the, our favourite things that we have in our garden. Yeah, so um, it's garden week. Every mm -hmm. episode this week is garden themed. Yeah. Uh, today it's all about flowers and pollination. Uh, you're going to have a quiz. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have a look at your photos. Yes. Uh, we've got the world's largest, smelliest flower, <laughs> which okay. is awesome. And right. we're going to have a live daffodil dissection. Yeah, uh, tomorrow we're going to be looking at mini beasts. Uh, Thursday is planting seeds. Yeah, and Am I right? Yeah, yes, good. Yeah, okay, definitely. good. <laughs> and, um, Friday we're going to be looking at garden mammals. So badgers, hedgehogs, squirrels, all that kind of thing. Um, check out the description box below because that mm -hmm. tells them everything you're going to need. Uh, what's in there? Yeah, so if you go to the description box, you'll find uh, all of the online resources that we've used to put this video together. Uh, so there are some downloadable activity sheets. There's also a couple of videos that I've made or me and Greg have made together that you might want to watch afterwards and a list of things you'll need if we do any makes or crafts. Um, but of course, please do leave us a comment as well. If you're watching right now, you can get involved in the live chat or you can just leave a comment below under the video. So loads, hello. Loads of comments <laughs> coming in. Um, I am going to be looking at my laptop a lot through this. Mm -hmm. um, I've got, we've got even more cameras. Um, shall I take them through the cameras? Yeah, so Greg is driving the desk is what we're calling it. That's why I'm extra nervous today. Not going to lie. So I'm a little bit it's right. just so us look. in our spare room. It is literally only okay. us in this Go room. On. Right, camera one is there. Camera two, hello. Camera three, bird cam. We'll see that in a minute. Yeah. We've also got the web. We've also got a table cam. That's Hi. for you. And we've got a microscope camera, but we'll worry about that in a minute. <laughs> Back to us. Yeah, in fact, so if you were with us yesterday, you'll know that yesterday we were talking about garden birds and we introduced bird cam. So why don't we go live oh. to our bird cam right now? So this is a camera that is pointing at bird feeders in our garden. What is it about these birds, right? An hour ago when we were looking through yeah. this, they were all over it. And what you can see up there in the corner is our homemade bird feeder from yesterday. Um, if you didn't watch yesterday's, you can watch it. It's on YouTube for whenever you want to mm -hmm. watch it. Um, and you can see how to make one of them. Okay, so nothing going on on bird camera. Nothing. Oh, nothing. Nothing. We get very excited when we have a visitor. And I should also say that I've also got sound effects today. Okay. So for example, I can do this. <laughs> know about any of this <laughs> that's like all my dreams come true right but it also means i can do birthdays okay. we've had in a bunch of birthday messages right, so, so um I'll let's kick, run I'll kick things let's off. run yeah, yeah, yeah um so first of all a big happy birthday to oliver who is five today happy birthday <laughs> and that's coming from your daddy jeremy uh, george six that's from mummy laura <laughs> A big happy birthday to Ethan, who is turning six today from your dad. Happy birthday, Ethan. Uh, also, happy birthday to Andy, who's turning 30-something. He's a friend of mine. Happy birthday, mate. Happy birthday, Andy. <laughs> um, should we see who's watching in the live chat, actually? Uh, yeah, we've got, oh, we've got loads of people. Uh, Claire going, no birds again. Must be dinner time. You're totally right. Right, we've got Poppy and Finley in Southampton. Elsa and Maisie in sunny Devon. Oski and Palo checking in from Notting Hill. Oh, and I can say hello to, there was a Zach and an Arthur and Ewan and Esther as well hello oh, so many so so lovely so, to have so you all with many. us um well you might have spotted that our actual our own bird feeder that we made yesterday our recycled bird feeder was there in the bird cam now you all got involved in your hundreds we had so many pictures sent in of your homemade recycled bird feeders we were completely overwhelmed it's incredible however we had to share some of them with you so thank you for sending in your pictures uh, here they are so here's the first one this is um alexandra and dominic 
And next up, we've got Kian, who made a bird feeder, and he's actually gone and popped that on his balcony, which is a really good idea. Nice, good job. We've got Nathan and Olivia. Great job, guys. They've even made some trays. They've made their recycled bird oh, feeders like out that. of like milk Oh, I like that, like cardboard bottles. trays. Yeah, I know, yeah, good, yeah. good engineering skills. Uh, here we've got Oliver. Now, we think your bird feeder is great, Oliver. However, we don't think your cat thinks the same. <laughs> Oliver and the back of a cat. Um, all right, uh, next one up. This one we've got Erin and Caitlin yep, loading in their, their seeds. Bird feeders. And here we have Thomas and Lara also making bird feeders. Thank Love you that so wallpaper, much. by the way, Thomas. Uh, this one we've got. Oh, this one on the left. This is Albie, and mm -hmm. this one's been made from Lego, which is amazing. How and Sebastian cool. on the right that's drawn some of the birds that, yeah. uh, that they've seen. We love your drawings. It's great to see that some of you, you know, are getting a bit uh, arty as well. So here we've got Hayley and Lucy who've been uh, drawing some pictures of birds. Of Robins, and then... <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> this is amazing yeah look at that so this is elena now elena has gone and made her own <laughs> bird hide so this is somewhere where she can hide out in the garden that's and brilliant. do a bird watching that's such a good idea so you know a box can be absolutely anything we got so so many in yeah, really sorry good. we can't show everything but thank you so so much for sending them yeah. in to us um right bird cam it's just it's just still not oh a, a twig <gasps> is moving a twig is moving that's a squirrel no hang on that's no. the bottom of a squirrel no it's not no it's not that is. Is it going to come up? Oh, go on. Mate. Let's let's see if go it wants on, to come mate. up. Um, if you didn't watch yesterday's show, uh, it was all about bird identification and bird sounds. You can go back and watch that. We should say hello to obviously everyone who's watching live, but also everyone who's watching back. There's the squirrel, pesky little thing. Get off our seat. Get squirrel. off our seat. You're not meant to make to an be, appearance till Friday. Okay, remember this one for Friday because Friday is going to be. A <laughs> How dare you? Look at him, he's chewing away. How very dare Cheeky. you. Cheeky. Right. Can we just say how Jean... That is proper cheek. I told you, look how excited she gets. I, I hope you're you. screaming, screaming at your screams right now. I cannot Get believe off, that. Get squirrel, they're for our birds. All right, we can leave them there. Um, a quick thank you as well. We had a bird uh, that popped up at the end of the show yesterday. Here it is on the right-hand side. This is a photo from yesterday's show. Um, and then actually uh, another angle of it, you can see this kind of pattern on the back, this kind of... Bre uh, mm -hmm. brown kind of dotted pattern um thank you very much that isn't that was identified as a dunnock by uh shay metcalf and natalie bartlett as well yeah. so thank you very much for letting us know about that great twitches there that's what we call bird watchers twitches um twitches. i think we should move on don't you yes flowers i'm, I'm so excited about the squirrel yeah, me too anyway still there. so yes um today is all about flowers so let's move birds to the side now Greg, I guess my first question to you and everybody at home who's mm. watching um for you what are the first signs of spring so I love spring, right? Four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, winter. For me, spring is absolutely the best. Mm -hmm. uh, you get birds singing kind of early in the morning. Um, you get all the flowers coming up. And it is it is genuinely the flowers that are my favourite. Yeah. You get the snowdrops, you get the daffodils, you get the bluebells a little bit later. Mm -hmm. um, actually, while we're talking flowers, can I go straight into the quiz? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go all right, it. okay. So hang on a minute. If it's quiz, I know this was a bit loud yesterday. I still need to work out how to monitor this. Anyway, it's quiz time, which means we get to do this. <laughs> Got to fade it right down, now they can hear us. Okay, so this one uh, is flower identification. Mm -hmm. So uh, for my mum watching, she's going to love this. Apparently she got all the birds yesterday, just like that. Well done, well done mum, you legend. Right, okay, so um, I'm going to show you, let me dip that down a bit more just to make sure we're not too loud. Okay, uh, great. I'm going to show you some flowers. Me. Uh, well, everyone, you and everyone at home. Right. So here are six flowers, and I want to see if you can identify those flowers. Now, before I knew what they were when I wrote them, uh, I reckon three of those I could get. So anyone at home, what do you think? Okay, so, right, so I haven't seen these either, so I'm gonna have a go at naming as many as I can. Now, I think sort of the fancy red one with the yellow bits in the middle, I think that's a type of lily. Um, then the one next to it, the pretty little blue ones, I'm not so sure. And um, uh, we've got the one with the one next to it, is, I think is a, is a pansy. The one below that, oh, I don't know, those little white ones. Um, the red one in the middle on the bottom row, that I think is a poppy. And, oh, you know what? Those little blue ones on the top, those are forget-me-nots. Oh. Pansy, I don't know what the purple one is. You've done pretty well. How have you done at home? <gasps> have you had a guess? Let's reveal the answers. Okay. So um, here they are once more and here are the answers Ooh, okay so, so you were right with lily 
Yeah. You were right with Poppy. You yep. also got the fine- uh, Forget Me Not, which yep. weirdly I forgot. Um, and that's the Pansy top right. Right, yep. Uh, well done to loads of people sending these in. This is amazing. So um, we've got Jude, um, you correctly guessed Lily. Well done. Jane got Poppy. Lola also guessed a Poppy. Um, Gemma there, you uh, you guessed Primrose. I didn't get that one. Well done. Well done, well done. Did anybody else get the Periwinkle? Periwinkle? I know. Bet my mum got Periwinkle. <laughs> I bet, bet she did. did. Okay, all right. Um, and our second and final set... Here okay. they come. Let's see uh, which of these can All right, we get mad. So here you go. So I think we have a dandelion. We've got plenty of rose in our garden. Uh, then I think a bluebell, a daisy. So that's the top row. Bottom row, that middle one I know because we always used to pick them and put them under our chins and ask each other if we oh, liked butter. Oh, yes. Yes, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't actually think that. That certainly doesn't mean anything, but that is a buttercup. And then we've got... Oh, maybe that one. I think it's a passion flower. Or maybe it's clem- clematis. Clematis. Um, it's like a climbing flower. So that's it. That's it. I'm not sure about the other purple one. All right. Well, let's um, let's see. How many did you get? Some people being like six for six on the first oh, one. All nice. right. Uh, nice. Well, let's see. So we've got loads of suggestions here for people coming in. Mm-hmm. So let's go back. Let's see what we've got. Uh, and they were. There oh, they are. well done, Brendan. You got dandelion. That is absolutely fantastic. Um, Olivia, who is five years old, got four out of the six. Well done. And um, Matt and Co, you got the buttercup as well. Yeah. Oh, Budlia. Butterflies. Budlia. Butterflies love a Budlia. Oh, right? So, so annoying. Um, that is, yeah, that one's a, that one's a given. Um, so there you go. Good, good job. Oh, hang on a minute. We get to play ourselves out with the same music as well, don't you? You ready? <laughs> okay. dancing out of time with the music really all, all your dancing is out of time with the music <laughs> but in a fun way all right let's get rid of that one um that was the flower quiz everybody and um, we're going to move on now to i guess sort of like our activity for the day and that is going to be our daffodil dissection now we've already found out that greg absolutely loves uh, spring because of all the flowers and a daffodil is actually one of your it's one of my favorite flowers, flowers. yeah right yep. But my favourite thing about spring is watching all of the insects buzzing around, moving from flower to flower. I particularly like bees. Yes, if you haven't watched Maddie's <laughs> beekeeping videos on her channel, yeah. uh, you need to watch them because they're absolutely fantastic. A lot with her mum as well. Yeah. They're great. So, so, so my mum and I were beekeepers, but I love all types of bees. Um, and bees are brilliant pollinators yep. and that's what we're going to be looking at today uh daffodils and pollination so i'm actually going to get a daffodil right here in fact greg why don't you have one as well thanks and we can do that thing where we sort of best uh, gift we... you've ever given me here we go um if you want to take a photo of this right oh. now you can share it oh uh, we did this yesterday and it was brilliant so okay all right ready with a phone take a picture in three two one <laughs> i should have done like a <laughs> noise but i couldn't press that at the same time okay so there you go. love it so if you're looking at the flowers in springtime and you're seeing the insects buzzing around like the bees, you might think they're having a whale of a time, but actually they're doing a really important job. Those insects, the bees, are helping to keep the garden alive. They're actually, when they visit other flowers, they're helping those plants make new plants. And this is what we, we call pollination. But to understand pollination a bit better, I thought we could get a close-up look of a daffodil. Okay, hang on. So I've got a couple go. of cameras that we can use for this one. There is one on the desk it's table cam for you <laughs> oh gosh oh spooky <laughs> no one needed that um okay so if you have a daffodil then please do this along with us right now but not to worry you can do it later or just watch the video because i'm actually going to be getting up close to the daffodil with a microscope um, but first of all let's just look at the parts of a flower that we can see with our own eyes so what is this what's this part just here Greg, let you lot me. guess first i'm sure you i'm, know. Go- I'm gonna go for the part? stem it is. It's yeah, the good. stem. And what does the stem do? Hold it up. <laughs> it does. So the stem. That was a challenging holds... question. <laughs> <laughs> the stem. It does. It holds this daffodil up, but also it helps deliver water and food that it will suck up through its root, and it will deliver that to the flower up here. It's a little bit like a straw, really. And then actually, if we saw this in the ground, there'd be some parts here that would be sort of like coming off. And what would they be? What leaves. Would we call those. The leaves, right? So we've got the leaves, we've got the stem, and then what's this bit at the top? What do we call that? The head? It's just the flower. The flower. Okay. (laughs) 
<laughs> so this bit here is the flower of the daffodil. Now, if you're doing the dissection with me, I want you to pinch the daffodil just about here and I want you to separate it from the stem, just like that. We should say, if you um, if you are doing it along with us, great. If you're watching this later or if you want to watch it back later, it will be on YouTube. So you can always watch it back and do it then. <laughs> so pollinators like bees, they are actually visiting flowers like this because they want to get something. Now, what are the bees looking for when they visit flowers, Greg? And you at home, what are the bees looking for? Well, they're called pollinators, mm -hmm. so I'm guessing pollen. Now, that's really interesting because sometimes they might be looking for pollen, but actually, most of the time, uh, they're looking for something else. It's a sugary liquid that they like to eat. Oh, 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 hang on, yeah. Let's see if anyone um, knows it. Let's see if anyone knows it. Um, lo mm. Loads of people. Yeah, Maddie, you're a bit quiet today. Apparently, I'm a lot louder. I'm going oh, okay. to try, try moving this towards you a bit. Sorry about that, guys. We're still... Uh, it's just us in our room. <laughs> it's just us in the spare room. I'm still trying to level it. Um, loads of messages coming in. Um, nectar. Yes, absolutely. Nectar. nectar. So nectar is the sugary liquid that you would find inside the flower, right at the base. And that is what the bees... Got all um, these suggestions of nectar. At. Charlie, Violet... Rachel, Eleanor, loads of nectars coming in. Sorry right, to interrupt. Okay. No, that's fine. So the bee wants to get to the nectar, but the flower wants the bee to visit because the flower wants to be pollinated. But to find out how that happens, we need to look at the inside of the daffodil. So Greg, could you please pass me my microscope? Time for the next camera. I told you there's like six cameras today. There right. you go. So I have got my microscope just here and a microscope will let me see things close up. Can I just move your hand so I'm yep. not tripping you up? Here you go. So I'm now going to use this to look inside. There we go, just like this. Now this is what is going on inside the daffodil. Wow, here we go. Can we focus it? We can absolutely focus this it. This is really, oh, it's a bug. What? It's a bug. It's there. It's a bug. Oh my goodness me, really difficult for me to get to this. Come on. <gasps> it's a bug. <laughs> buddy <laughs> so that i think that's actually a type of flower beetle so wow. it's, not, it's not just bees that pollinate flowers beetles pollinate as well and that is a little flower beetle that's clearly made its home in there shall we um shall let's we switch the other one. Yeah, shall we switch, switch to this up. one and we can take that one back outside oh, and then we can, poor little we can guy. put the flower beetle back outside again later all right then. That's so i'm fair, going to it? take the head of another flower and we are going to look inside this one instead yeah nice. here we go so you can see it so in the middle of the flower you, there's like a big longer stick in the middle isn't there and then it's surrounded like this oh, i think we've got another little beetle in here you know doesn't matter. Okay, so then you've got it surrounded by these other sort of like little dangly bits. Now those are called filaments. And on top of the filaments, there are fluffy pads called anthers. But to see those closer, we're actually gonna peel back the petals. Now, before I take these petals off, Greg, yep. what do you think they're doing? What do you think these bright color petals these are ones, saying to the pollinator? I yeah. think they're basically saying, hey, I'm over here. Yeah, they are. They're like, hey, I'm here. Come and get some nice juicy nectar. Yeah, absolutely. It's a bright, it's a bright color that's going to attract the bees. And it says, come and get me. I am full of tasty nectar. So if you're joining along, I am now just going to peel back these petals. Oh, so like you're doing so. both layers, essentially. Yeah, I am very carefully taking back both layers because actually the uh, petals in the middle, they're sort of a trumpet shape and they work a little bit like a tunnel. They're sort of guiding the bee where to go. Here we are. So now we can go back can get to a microscope. Look. Here we are, back to microscope. So now we can get a better look at these, these parts Whoa. here. Look at this. So... You can see the dangly bits that are, are that are surrounding the bigger stick. Now these dangly bits are the filaments and on top wow. these fluffy pads are the anthers. And the anthers are where the pollen is produced. Look at that. Right, so if a bee has to squeeze its way into a daffodil looking to slurp up uh, that tasty nectar, then um, they're going to have to brush past the pollen. So let me just get this right. Mm. So the bee yeah. wants the nectar, yeah. but in going for the nectar, the pollen gets brushed onto it. Absolutely. So bees are covered in in in, in hair, um, and all these little bits of pollen that are on the bait on the uh, anthers, they are going to brush onto the bee's body. That's amazing. Great. So the bees had a tasty snack, and the plant has got pollen all over the bee. Yes. Now that bee is going to go and visit another flower, and this is where the really exciting part happens. It's going to brush the pollen onto the other flower, right? It is, absolutely. So it's going to take its uh, pollen-covered body to another flower. And this time, when it uh, goes searching for nectar, that sugary syrup, let's go back to the microscope. There you go. We have got 
this part here. So this is the bit that's at the top of the uh, longest stick in the middle. And we call this the stigma. Can you see that? Yeah. So the stigma is on top of this longer stick that we call a style. Wow. Now, when, in fact, maybe if I do this, I can show you the top of it. Let's have a look. There you go. Oh, cool. So can you see the shape of it? Yeah, yeah. There you it's go. It's like in three little parts. It is, yeah. Oh, a bit shaky. Um, so when a bit of pollen brushes on the stigma just there, the pollen will then travel from the stigma all the way down the style, and then it will go to this bulge just here that's at the bottom of uh, the flower part. So you can see there's almost like a bulge. You see that there? Yep. Now we're going to look inside the bulge to find out where the pollen that's come off the bee will travel to. Now you can do this bit with your uh, hands, but I'm just going to use some scissors so I can do it really neatly. While you're doing that, Mads, oh. just um, thank you for the lovely comments. Someone's saying, can you do this all the time? Oh, that's so sweet. I tell you what, it's taken every hour of the day just to do one a day. Um, <laughs> yeah. But thanks so much. Another person enjoying the themed t-shirts. Oh, Brilliant. thank you. Um, so thanks for all these lovely comments. We can kind of, I can see them coming in really fast. How's the dissection going? Okay, the dissection's going really well. So if you're taking part or you want to do is just split uh, that part of the flower in half so now you can see the filament the stigma but also here we go so i can show you this here oh gosh it's so hard isn't it because it's it is so really difficult in. so we've got the f so actually i'm just going to go straight here if the pollen goes in um, into the top of the stigma travels down the style and eventually oh, making me oh what it's going to get to this here now this this bulge at the bottom of the flower is actually the ovary. Can you just go back up again so we can, can get a sense of where to. that is? So you've all you've done is you've tracked down the... Oh, I see. Yeah, cool. Gotcha. So you've just gone all the way down from the bit yeah. we saw at the end. So that there is the stigma. That's it, yeah. And then, and then, then take this... Down at the style. Because this is where the, the bee... Filaments. Yeah. This is where the pollen travels all the way down here wow. to... So are they the eggs? They are, they are. So this is the inside of the ovary. And what you're looking at right now are, yeah, they're like little eggs. We call them ovules. Wow. Now, when that pollen travels down and it joins one of these ovules, we say that it, uh, that it has been fertilised. The flower is pollinated. And that little egg will now turn into a seed. And that seed can go on to grow into a new plant. So that really is pollination. A bee or another pollinator will visit a flower and it will get some of the nectar, but it will pick up pollen. It will then travel to another flower and that pollen will then rub onto the stigma of that flower and then it will travel down to the ovary where it will fertilise an egg and they can make seeds. I've never seen that before and that was <gasps> absolutely beautiful. That You're was welcome. amazing. Thanks, that was awesome. No worries. Um, we always like to give you resources in the description box of this video. Um, in the video description, you'll find a link to a teaching pack on flowers and pollination. In there, there is this parts of a flower uh, sheet. So you could have a look at that. You could then label it if you want, or you could even put it down and actually put those bits of that dissected daffodil on top of it. And, Good and, idea. Which would be really, really, really nice. Yeah. Um, so there's loads of things you can do. And actually, I would like to show you one of the favourite flowers I've ever seen in my life. Okay, all right. So actually, we've been talking about bees as pollinators, but bees don't actually see the same way as us, do they? No. So we see a range of colours, all the colours of the rainbow. So red, orange, yellow, green, indigo, there's a blue, indigo, violet. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, bees don't see red. Whenever they look at something red, they actually just see it as black. They hmm. can't, they can't, uh, they don't have the receptors to see red. But they can see something beyond the violet that's called ultraviolet. Cool. Um, so what I've got here is a couple of pictures of some flowers. So this is a dandelion as we see it on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, it's actually how the bee sees it. So the bee wow. is seeing ultraviolet colours. And that's how the bee sees it, which is amazing. And that makes so much sense because actually the way it looked to a bee, it's almost like a target, isn't it? It's like a landing oh, well, spot for the bee one. to go to. This is an evening primrose and this is really that target. Look, we can't see it with our normal eyes, but the bee sees that ultraviolet and it sees that uh, that target right in the middle. So there's so much going on. And these flowers, they've over years and years and years, thousands, millions of years, they've evolved mm -hmm. so that the, their favourite pollinator will come and pollinate them. Absolutely, right? because, you know, pollinators, not just bees, uh, bats are pollinators, as are butterflies, and we even saw a little flower beetle. And yep. you, you'll see that um, around the world, flowers look very, very different. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's partly because they're pollinated by different things. So Maddie and I went on a trip to Thailand 
two and a bit years ago now. Might have been longer. Gosh, it was quite a while ago. Um, and what we saw there was amazing. We, we heard this rumour that the world's largest and smelliest flower had bloomed. And this is so rare. This is like super rare. Yes. Uh, and we made a video about it. So what I want to do is I want to show you, um, this is the video if you want to go and see it. It's called World's Largest Smelliest Flower um, on Maddie's channel. And I just want to show you the moment that we find it. Here you go. Come on, play. Is it going to play? What's... Oh, oh play. Oh. Um, our guide thinks he's spotted a roughly... Oh, it looks blue. like the internet oh, might be struggling so it, a little so bit too much. It turns out that the internet won't play a video... <laughs> whilst we're live streaming. Whilst we're live streaming. Okay, that's good to know. Well, that's all right. All right. Well, we can just describe what happens instead. Well, let me then uh, come back to this and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to show you a picture of this. So basically we're walking through the jungles and we don't know whether we're going to see it. We've gone to some places that we think we're going to see it and it's not there. Um, and then suddenly our, our guide says, it's here, it's here. And we absolutely lose it yeah. and we run over and this is what we see. So I can show you, hopefully this will just show you. That's what it looks like. Okay, yeah. And it's absolutely huge. Mm -hmm. And what you can see there is you can see um, it has these five big, we call them five big red lobes around mm -hmm. the side. They're kind of like the petals. It's covered in these lumps and bumps. In the middle, there's this kind of soft spikes. And um, it smells really weird. So I'll just give it one more go. Shall I smell it? I dare you. Really? Yeah, I dare you. <laughs> oh, man. Put your head in. Okay. Do it. Competing with a wasp here. Yeah, don't get your nose stung. <laughs> I should say this. This has been put. Yeah, oh, I think they stopped that. You can watch. You, you have can watch to go and watch that video afterwards. It can't quite deal with with the live streaming as well. But it absolutely stunk. It stunk like I think I described it as bins yeah. and like rotting meat. It was absolutely revolting. And you got me to put my head in it and go and watch it afterwards because the reaction, my reaction, and then your reaction when I get you to put your head in it as well I was is, really... is hilarious. Yeah. Um, Why does it smell like that though? That's the so question. And I want you to try to answer this one. Why would this flower smell like a dustbin? Mm. Go on. So if you think mm. you know, write your answers in the comments if you're here with us live. Why it, would it smell like a dustbin? Here's a clue. It's smelling like that because of what pollinates it. There you go. So it's any smelling clues? like that. Any, any guesses? Oh, here we go. Deepak says uh, it smells bad to attract flies. That's yes. That's right. Well done. Good That's it. job. Exactly. Um, this flower is pollinated by flies. Yeah. It's not pollinated by bees. So, you know, flowers have evolved to attract different pollinators and flies love a bit of rotting rotting fruit and they love that smell of dustbins <laughs> they sure do so go and watch that video we'll put it in the video yeah. description so you can try a daffodil dissection and you can watch that video in the video description as well so we've actually come to the end of the show now we like to share something with you that has made us smile and yesterday we told you all about the rainbow trail or hashtag rainbow i spy mm. and uh, so many of you sent in pictures of your rainbows that you have been putting in your windows and we just wanted to share some of them with you yeah, so, here so you go. let me bring them up here we go um this first one is this chloe and james it is yeah and they've painted it on their their whole window i love mm -hmm. that that's really that's yeah awesome. it looks great it's almost like stained glass and then next we have sam so sam that's brilliant we can just see you uh poking your head out the bottom of your rainbow <laughs> uh, here you've got chloe and holly amazing rainbows good work yeah i love the painting and um, we don't know the name of this next person but we thought your double rainbows were absolutely double lovely rainbow! <laughs> <laughs> And then finally, I've oh, got two here. So we've got Rose. Uh, Rose, she did the uh, the rainbow that she's popped on her door. And then also we've got a student from Swanwick Primary School. So thank you so much for sending your rainbows in. And if you do find something on the internet or anywhere really that's made you smile, please do share it with us so that we can share it with you our audience, our community here on YouTube. Yeah, so these are our uh, handles on social media, on Twitter and Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, if you do see that thing that makes you smile, tag us and then we can share that tomorrow. Mm. Um, I just want to do a little shout out for Rory, who is five year old, who spotted, you know, we said um, yeah, yesterday, we said, hey, we're going to put this rainbow in the in the window. He actually got in, in contact, his dad did, and said, actually, that's a, um, a Lego cross section through the Earth. That's the Earth's core. Spot on. You're not it wrong. is exactly that. And that will feature in a future video, I am sure. Um, tomorrow, it's all about 
mini beasts. Yes, tomorrow we are talking about mini beasts and we are going to have an expert with us live on Skype. So we would like your questions. Please, please do send us any questions you have about mini beasts to our email address, which is hello, let's go live at gmail.com. You can see it just up here. Um, a few clues about our expert. Um, they take brilliant photos of wildlife. They love to get their walking boots on and and go for a walk. Those are your clues. Who Love do you that. think our expert might be? Um, we should say we were inundated by messages on social media yeah. yesterday, which was so wonderful. Thank you. If you would like uh, us to feature a photo or you want to send in one of those questions, please do so to the email address. Yes. Um, but do keep tagging us on the socials as well, because we want as many people to uh, to mm. hear that we're doing this and get it out. Because um, yeah. yeah, it's just us, and it'd be great if more yeah. people watch it and, and enjoy it. Yeah. All right. So I think. I think that's I think pretty that's much. It from us. I think that's pretty much it. Thirds will be see, uh, Thursday will be seeds. Friday will be mammals. Mm -hmm. um, it's time for us, therefore, to say goodbye. Um, thank you so much for all of these comments. We'll look at them. <laughs> we'll, we'll sit here and look through them after the show. And yeah. um, please share this with people. Subscribe, and then you'll uh, if you hit the notification bell next to it, you'll you'll get a notification when we go live. Mm -hmm. yeah. So as always, please do stay curious, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.